Hey everyone, welcome back to all my listeners. This is episode 15 in season 11. Today is Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. My name is Sonal Patel, and this is the Paint the Medical Picture podcast series. Now, all right, you guys, I had to wait until late to record this episode because I wanted to tell you all that I saw the total solar eclipse out in Bloomington, Indiana on Monday. It was simply a unbelievable experience. I was already in Bloomington and I didn't want to leave. Um, I was there in the weekend and I knew the eclipse was on Monday and I knew I would be stuck in traffic afterwards, but I just didn't care. Um, I literally only arrived at like 1230 in the morning um, after driving through, you know, gobs and gobs of traffic, the whole world seemed to be on the road going somewhere, um, to see the eclipse. And then they all turned around and came back because the next day was a work day, obviously. But I hope all of you out there got to enjoy a part of the eclipse. This was a total solar eclipse for me, um, out in Bloomington. And it was just spectacular from the shadows on the ground to the colors that changed, um, when you weren't wearing any type of sunglasses, when you just were looking out in your environment, the color had changed as well. The color of the sky, the color of the trees, everything had changed. Um, it literally was fading into nighttime at around 3.04 through about 3.08 in the afternoon. So it was remarkable. And then to see it um, totally covered by the moon was just epic. And to see some solar flares at the bottom, um, they were bright red. I could see it. I could see um, planets were available in the sky. I mean, planets during the day, bright, bright planets were out shining brightly. It was so magical. And the cloud formation in the sky as well was remarkable during that entire hour from about 2 p.m. till after 3. Those clouds that formed were just so very impressive. Um, I heard several people across the country, including myself, we had taken pictures and um, some of those clouds look like angels um, in different parts of the country, but we all have the same image of this angel-like form um, right underneath the, the total solar eclipse. So anyway... Yes, I've taken up a lot of this podcast on this solar eclipse, but that's why I wanted to record it after I came back and saw it. So hope you guys get a chance, at least in your lifetime, to witness it. I knew this was my one and only chance to see it in my lifetime as a total solar eclipse, so I simply had to go. And um, I know it's incredible, a very, very moving experience. So hopefully one day in the next 40 years, I believe, will be the next total solar eclipse. Hopefully you guys will catch it somewhere in the world. All right, you guys, let's get into today's episode. Today's the second Wednesday of the month, and you know that my Today's Newsworthy is going to be featuring my OIG work plan updates for March 2024. And in my trusty tip, I get into what's been missing in informed patient consent. And of course, I'm going to go ahead and round out and close out today's episode with another remarkable quote on quality and quantity by William A. Foster. Today's episode is sponsored by Advanced Coding Services. Let's get into it. Today's episode is sponsored by Advanced Coding Services, a leading medical billing and medical coding school in the United States. Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned professional, Our training equips you with the tools and support you need to advance your career. Our medical billing and coding school meets your needs worldwide online or in person with one-on-one support throughout your training. We are committed to helping our alumni and credentialed medical community in keeping up their certifications by offering various avenues for acquiring your continuing education units. In addition to our Mastering the Business of Medicine retreats, Offered several times throughout the year in different parts of the country, we now offer memberships. You can conveniently earn your CEUs by attending our exclusive members-only webinars. Since our aim is to nurture and grow the careers of individuals who work in the business of medicine, we call our member area the Apple Orchard. Advanced Coding Services. Educate. Nurture. 
inspire, reaching back with a hand up. So let's get into Newsworthy. The month of March's OIG Work Plan updates. There are eight updates to the OIG Work Plan for the month of March, 2024. The first OIG Work Plan update is titled Audit of Medicaid Select Diabetes and Weight Loss Drugs. This report will be coming from the Office of Audit Services. Medicaid utilization of and gross spending on select diabetes and weight loss drugs have rapidly increased in recent years. The select diabetes drugs were approved to help control blood sugar levels for individuals with type 2 diabetes. However, these drugs are known to be used for weight loss. Most states cover these drugs to treat Medicaid enrollees with diabetes. Additionally, some states cover similar types of drugs that were approved for weight loss. OIG will identify national Medicaid utilization for select diabetes and weight loss drugs and select one or more states to review. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2025. Now, the second OIG work plan update for March 2024 is titled Audit of Diabetes Drugs Under Medicare Part D. This report will be coming from the Office of Audit Services. In 2022, six type 2 diabetes drugs accounted for more than half of all Medicare Part D payments for diabetes drugs. Diabetes drugs are meant to lower blood sugar levels and often result in weight loss. Part D spending for one of these six drugs, Ozempic, more than tripled between 2020 and 2022, with expenditures jumping from $1.5 billion to $4.6 billion. Other diabetes drugs are experiencing similar growth and could overshadow Ozempic. Part D payments for a type 2 diabetes drug such as Ozempic for a use that Medicare does not cover as a medically accepted indication is not in compliance with Medicare requirements and presents an opportunity for fraudulent, excessive, or unnecessary Part D payments. Furthermore, drugs that are used for weight loss are specifically excluded from Medicare Part D coverage. OIG will obtain Part D data for prescribed diabetes drugs and any related Part B service claims. OIG will determine whether they were billed according to Medicare requirements. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2025. Now, the third OIG work plan update for March 2024 is titled Audit of Nursing Facility Drug Overdoses. This report is expected from the Office of Audit Services. Drug abuse and overdose deaths are at epidemic levels in the United States. According to the CDC, which is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 1 million Americans died from an overdose during 1999 through 2021 with 80,000 of those deaths occurring in the year 2021. People who have had at least one overdose are more likely to have another. For every drug overdose that results in death, there are many more non-fatal overdoses, each one with its own emotional and economic toll. OIG will determine whether selected nursing facilities complied with quality of care requirements and reported investigated and implemented corrective actions for potential illegal drug usage and significant pain medication errors involving opioid overdoses. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2025. Now the fourth OIG work plan update for March 2024 is titled Patient Safety Organizations, Key Insights, Challenges, and Opportunities. This report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. Despite nationwide efforts to improve patient safety, patient harm events in hospitals remain a serious concern. The Patient Safety Organization, or PSO, program, authorized by the Patient Safety and Quality Improvement Act of 2005, is the flagship federal program to facilitate patient harm reporting and learning on a national scale. However, in the years since the PSO program was created, OIG work has found consistently high patient harm rates in hospitals and a lack of hospital identification of these events, which are areas that the PSO program was designed to address. OIG work has also found that although many hospitals find value in PSOs, hospitals find it challenging to navigate the legal protections that surround their work with PSOs. 
This study will build on previous OIG work by determining the extent to which hospitals participate in the PSO program nationwide and identifying the program successes as well as challenges. OIG will also identify opportunities for the PSO program to mitigate these challenges and leverage new strategies to improve patient safety. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2025. Now, the fifth OIG work plan update for March 2024 is titled Effects of Vertical Integration on Medicare Part D. This report is coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. Approximately three quarters of Medicare Part D enrollees received their prescription drug benefits through plans offered by five large companies. These large plan sponsors are vertically integrated operations affiliated with their own pharmacy benefit managers and in many cases their own mail order and specialty pharmacies. Congress, the Medicare Payment Advisory Commission, and the media have raised concerns that vertical integration leads to higher prescription drug costs. This particular study will use existing pricing payment, and rebate data to provide broader insight into the effect of vertical integration on Part D costs for both the Medicare program and its enrollees. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2025. Now, the sixth OIG work plan update for March 2024 is titled 2023 Performance Data for Senior Medicare Patrol Projects. This report will be coming from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. In 1997, Senior Medicare Patrol, or SMP, projects were established to recruit and train retired professionals and other volunteers to prevent, recognize, and report healthcare fraud, errors, and abuse. The initiative, which stemmed from recommendations in a Congressional Committee report accompanying the Omnibus Consolidated Appropriations Act of 1997, continues today. OIG reports SMP performance data annually. OIG will, re will review performance data and documentation relating to Medicare and Medicaid recoveries, savings, and cost avoidance for SMP projects. The Administration for Community Living requested this information, which will support its efforts to evaluate and improve the performance of its projects. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2024. Now, the seventh OIG work plan update for March 2024 is titled Medicare Inpatient Hospital Billing for Sepsis. This report will be issued from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. Sepsis is the body's extreme response to an infection. It is a life-threatening emergency medical issue that often progresses quickly and responds best to an early intervention. The definition of and guidance for sepsis have changed over the years in attempts to identify it more accurately. The definition of sepsis was updated in 2016 by an international task force to better differentiate sepsis from a general infection. This more narrow definition is widely recognized by groups such as the World Health Organization. However, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, as well as the CDC, currently recognize an older, more broad definition. Sepsis is a frequently billed diagnosis in Medicare patients. There are concerns that hospitals may be taking advantage of this broader definition as they have a financial incentive to do so. This particular study will analyze Medicare claims to assess patterns in the inpatient hospital billing of sepsis in 2023 and describe how the billing of sepsis varied among hospitals. OIG will also estimate the costs to Medicare associated with using the broader rather than the, the more narrow definition of sepsis. This final report is expected in fiscal year 2025. Now, the final eighth OIG work plan update for March 2024 is titled Assessing the Accuracy of Nursing Home Falls Reporting in MDS Assessments. This report is expected from the Office of Evaluation and Inspections. In the Medicare and Medicaid programs, nursing homes are required to report residents' falls in patient assessments. CMS then uses this information to determine the percentage of the residents experiencing falls 
that result in a major injury for each certified nursing home. These percentages are posted on CMS's Care Compare website to give consumers information about the relative performance of each nursing home. In this particular study, OIG will assess the accuracy of the patient assessment data used to calculate nursing, nursing home fall rates. Specifically, OIG will use claims data to identify hospitalizations due to falls with major injury among nursing home residents that are Medicare enrollees, including people who are duly enrolled in Medicaid. OIG will then use patient assessments to assess the extent to which nursing homes reported those falls. OIG will examine the characteristics of the people who did not have their falls reported. Finally, OIG will examine the characteristics of nursing homes that did not report falls among their residents. This final report is expected in fiscal year 20. 25. And now it's time for my best practice tips in trusty tip. CMS has released new guidance on patient informed consent. The memorandum for hospitals is titled revisions and clarifications to hospital interpretive guidelines to informed consent. It summarizes that hospital policies should set clear guidelines for providers and trainees to obtain and document informed patient consent before performing sensitive examinations like breast, pelvic, prostate, and rectal exams, especially those performed under anesthesia. Now, the preface of these revisions are based on increasing concerns about the absence of informed patient consent prior to allowing practitioners or supervised medical or advanced practice provider or other applicable students to perform training and education related examinations outside the medically necessary procedure, such as breast, pelvic, prostate, and rectal examinations, particularly those on anesthetized patients. They are reinforcing hospitals' informed consent obligations. Now, those requirements related to informed consent for hospitals are found throughout the hospital conditions of participation, those COPs, the patient's right condition of participation at 42 CFR 482.13b2, as well as the medical record services conditions of participation at 482.24c4v, and finally, the surgical services conditions of participation at 482.51b2. Surveyors must ensure that a hospital's patient-informed consent policy and process, as well as its informed consent forms, contain elements and information that allow for a patient or his or her representative to make fully informed decisions about their care. And finally, I focus Season 11 Spark on quality versus quantity. I want this 11th season spark to be filled with our world's thought leaders, writers, artists, philosophers, everyone who inspires the need for better understanding of quality versus quantity. So in this week's inspiring quote in Spark is from William A. Foster. Quality is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, and skillful execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Absolutely true, right? This quote reminds us that our hard work matters. This quote encourages us to continue being mindful in our work. This quote inspires us to seek quality over quantity. I'm happy William A. Foster's spark still burns brightly in all of us today. So that wraps up today's episode. And as always, I appreciate you all diving into today with me. If you want more information from me, please go ahead and follow me on LinkedIn. I'll leave links to everything in the show notes below. Now, all right, you guys, remember to catch my LinkedIn live broadcast this Friday for my latest episode of Compliance Capers with my very good friend and colleague, Betty Hovey. We're focusing the entire month of April on self-disclosure protocols. And on Friday's case, we're going to be talking about a specialty practice that self-disclosed on an incident to matter. 
Now don't forget, this will also be found on my YouTube channel for Paint the Medical Picture. All right, you guys, I hope you take the time out of your busy, busy days, carve time out for yourselves and enjoy the beautiful month of April and all the spring weather that's hopefully popping up wherever you are in the world. So thanks so much, all of you. Wish you all an amazing and very, very happy week ahead. Thanks so much for listening in on today's episode. And I hope every week with me brings you closer to helping your providers paint a masterpiece. See you next Wednesday.